All right, well, let me uh, start off here. My name is Jesse Serrano. I am one of the broker directors here at Back 9 Insurance. Let me give you a little history about me. My insurance career started in about 2008 uh, with MetLife Insurance. Uh, and I was only there a brief amount of time because I came across an opportunity uh, uh, with Anthem Blue Cross at the corporate office who actually is across the street from the MetLife corporate office here in uh, uh, Westlake Village, California. Um, I sold health insurance for about six years. And I, I can tell you guys that before the first Affordable Care Act open enrollment, uh, I already knew that the health insurance industry was, was a sinking ship, um, which is when I joined Back 9 Insurance. Uh, I've had a lot of fun here on the wholesale side uh, of the insurance business. It, it's allowed me the opportunity to give back to uh, my fellow insurance agents and help them with grow, grow their business. Um, but being a, a recovering health insurance agent, I do remember uh, how scary it was um, to go back from uh, health from health insurance go back to uh, life insurance. And I, I remember being concerned and overwhelmed with, do I know enough? Am I going to ask, ask the right questions? Um, all that product knowledge. Uh, so keeping all this in mind, I've created this series uh, to help introduce health insurance agents into life insurance, to annuities, long-term care insurance, and disability insurance. Uh, I can tell you guys today that if you already have a WinFlex account, uh, today's class is not for you. Um, if you don't know what Winplex is, even better. Uh, the next class that we'll present uh, in April, uh, we'll dive a little deeper into the different types of life insurance, UELs, IULs, SULs, whole life, and all that good stuff. Um, but I'm here today to just simply introduce you life insurance and to teach you about all the possibilities that there are with this product. Um, I hope you learned today that though it can be very sc scary, um, it can also be a very simple and versatile product uh, to present. I have with us today on the phone uh, Kirby Thomas of Alta Vista Insurance. Uh, Kirby is a 15-year veteran of the insurance industry. Um, however, he is also a veteran of two branches of the military, the Army and the Marines, so we thank him first and foremost for services. Uh, Kirby and I have been doing business for almost a year. Kirby spectrum ranges from individual health insurance to long-term care, disability insurance, life insurance, and even uh, employee benefits. Now, the reason Kirby is here with us today is because he is very good at what he does. Uh, Kirby has been doing consistent life insurance business with Back9 for quite some time now. Uh, I work with over 30 agents. Uh, however, of the 30, uh, Kirby is the one that stands out because of his consistent and his constant flow of business. Uh, Kirby, anything else you'd like to add to us? No. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, it's rare sometimes that we have somebody with something that, you know, we want to hear on a given day. And, you know, it's, it, it will be of benefit, what you'll hear here. Uh, Jesse didn't skip anything in the intro. Um, life insurance is kind of my baby. I like doing it. It's fun. It's fun talking to new people I've never met before who want to hear about life insurance, and for some reason that translates into that they buy it from me. So um, go for it. Thank you. Perfect. All right, so let's get started. Um, in a closed-door meeting at Anthem in 2011, uh, we were warned of what the future of the health insurance industry could look like if the Affordable Care Act went through. Um, we knew way back when that there would be a need to create narrow networks. Uh, we knew about the significant increase of premium that would be necessary to have this all sustained. Uh, we were also warned that the future of the health insurance agent uh, could be very similar to that of, the, uh, of a travel agent. Um, the fact that people can now purchase health insurance online like they purchase vacations is a very, very scary thought. Um, however, what's even scarier than this is what's going on with our commissions. Um, carriers are paying less every year and I can only imagine it's going to go, in, it's going to go, to go down from here. Uh, Cigna currently pays 5% per year per member. Uh, Anthem, as of uh, this year, is now paying $18 per month per member for the first year only. Assurance, paying as little as 1%. Okay? Now, what this is telling us is it has never been easier to go broke selling health insurance. Now, we're not telling you here to start over with a new career, well, that would mean you're packing up your desk, you're moving out, and you're starting over completely fresh somewhere else. But what we are suggesting 
is that you take the skill set and inertia that you have from currently selling health insurance, change your focus just by about three degrees, and you continue moving forward with your insurance career with products like life insurance, disability insurance, annuities, and long-term care. You already have the license, so why not use it, okay? <clears throat> so what would be the point, though, if doubling your income also meant doubling your workload? Where, where's the fun in that, okay? Now, what we're talking about here at Backdown Insurance is not doubling your workload. It's doubling the opportunities. And how you ask? Well, we want you to diversify your portfolio. Start offering life insurance with carriers from Accident to Zurich, long-term care insurance with some of the most competitive carriers in the industry. We have a full suite of annuity carriers and disability insurance with some of the most highly regarded companies uh, in the industry. <clears throat> Let's take a look at just one of these products and uh, life insurance. And I want to talk about the versatility of the product. It's something that it can be the solution to many of your clients' financial dilemmas. It's simplicity. Though it's a product that uh, can be very complex, it is also a product that can be very simple to, uh, to understand and very simple to explain uh, to your clients. I also want to point out the dollars per hour uh, in relation to selling health insurance. And of course, the commission earned uh, and the types of figures we're looking at by selling life insurance. Uh, this is a product that requires very little effort uh, but has lots of benefit. Um, so let's take at some of the look at some of the uses of life insurance. Um, we're of course all aware that when you die, your family can get a little something um, that you can use it to pay for funeral expenses. But what about all these other uses of life insurance? And then of course uh, businesses. Do you think they use life insurance? Absolutely. In fact, uh, Kirby, you want to touch on uh, business life insurance and how it can be used? Uh, sure. Uh, I'll just grab a couple of those. You have a number of them, and it would take a while. But let's drill into a couple. And just so everyone knows, um, what we're going to talk about with these two uses of life insurance, these are easy to launch discussions with the different people in a business. You drive these kinds of discussions with questions. So let's take fund and buy sell agreement. For those of you who may be new to life insurance, the funding part of a buy-sell agreement is life insurance, and a buy-sell agreement would be such that, uh, let's say, Jesse and I are in a business together. We have a $10 million business. Jesse owns half, and I own the other half. Now, we're both married, and if uh, I pass away, Jesse's going to end up working with my neophyte wife who knows nothing about our business. Jesse would like to have the entire business without the neophyte part called my wife. So what does he do? He gets a buy and sell agreement from his attorney, and then he funds it by having a life insurance policy, one on each one of the two parties, him and then me. And he has $5 million of insurance, I have $5 million, and it's set up so that if I pass away, he gets $5 million. What does he do with it? He uses it to buy out my wife's part of the business. She gets $5 million, and she walks away, and Jesse has the business to himself. So if you were in front of a business owner, you could always ask them, once you know that they're partners, you could say, tell me, do you have a buy-sell agreement? They might say, oh, yes. The next question would be, have you funded it? They may just look at you in that weird way as if to say, I think you're asking me something meaningful. I just don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so when you get that look, you're on to something because chances are they may have bought life insurance 10 years ago, but the business is now twice what it was in terms of value now. So maybe it's time to sell some new life insurance to fund that old buy-sell agreement. Maybe they have no life insurance in the buy-sell agreement. I did this with a pair of doctors. They're oral surgeons, actually, and you know it's nice. You get two policies at the same time, and now you're in the business talking about all kinds of things. The other one is uh, key person insurance, a little like buy-sell in that you're covering a person in a business. But imagine Jesse and I were in a business, and we had a landscape business, and Jesse was the person who got all the big contracts. Jesse actually brings in about $6 million a year based on the conversations he has every day because he's selling it like nobody else. Well, one day, Jesse passes away, and I have to replace Jesse. 
have to replace his quantitative amount of business that he brings to us in terms of revenue. And so what happens then is I have to go find a person, <laughs> I have to pay that person, <laughs> I have to do a few other things to replace what Jesse did. Well, if I don't have the millions to do it, I'm kind of stuck. So if I put a key person policy on Jesse, and if Jesse passes away, I'm not stuck. I can actually go hire somebody a lot like Jesse, even though Jesse's pretty rare and different and special. I still have to find someone who can do what Jesse does. So you can see how if you're talking to a business, whether it's a partnership, buy, sell, or whether it's a single business with a key person, a successful business always has one key person. Right now in your business, you're a key person, okay, <laughs> for all of you that are listening. So key person insurance can work that way. Now, that's just for the business, and you can poke around and you can ask questions about all the rest of these things, too, because they always involve a bit of life insurance and covering a risk. So um, this is just something that if you walked out with any of this information tomorrow, you could actually start a conversation that may turn into new commission dollars for you as long as you just have some questions and are willing to go ask those questions. Perfect. And, and just to add to what Kirby said, uh, we do offer complimentary business valuations uh, through one of our carriers that so will go out there and actually do this so that we can make sure we do a uh, current uh, buy-sell agreement um, based off of the current value of the business. So more stuff that we can offer that you just do not have to be a pro on, but just know that the opportunity is there um, and that we're here to support you on it. Um, on the personal side, of course, um, we, we, we need to start educating our clients and that life insurance just isn't about, isn't the way it used to be anymore. It's not about just when you die. A lot of the policies nowadays come, you don't even have to die anymore to use life insurance. They come with living benefits. So we have policies that have the accelerated living benefits rider. So for example, if your client was diagnosed uh, with a terminally Ill, uh, illness, um, that could result, you know, within a death in the next 24 months, they could actually start taking a portion of their uh, death benefit. We also have what's the big hit right now is long-term care riders. Everybody wants long-term care. However, people do not want to purchase it how, because they don't know if they will use it. Uh, it's too expensive, and prices keep going up. Well, now you can add the long-term care rider to the life insurance policy, and now, should there be a long-term care need come up, they can draw down from the benefit dollar for dollar. And of course, if they don't use a long-term care, they still have a million-dollar policy that they can uh, pass on uh, to their loved ones. Um, another excellent use of life insurance is um, about two months ago, I, I did a policy for a young family. Uh, they had a three-year-old and they had a one-year-old. And what they did want to do was they wanted to fund a life insurance policy over the next 15 years, and it was designed so that when the oldest turned 18 and started college, dad could start withdrawing uh, money from the life insurance to start helping cover uh, college expenses. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of uses uh, for life insurance, and it's just it's not what it used to be anymore. If your client has an old policy. Let's take a look at it because they may not have the living benefits. Uh, it may be underperforming as far as interest rate. So let's take a look at it and see if we can do uh, better. Uh, let's take a look here at two realistic, everyday, plain vanilla uh, scenarios and what they can mean to you as an agent. Uh, we have here a 45-year-old California male looking for $250,000 for a 20-year term just to cover the remaining balance on his mortgage. Okay. Annual premium, $400. Your commission would be $320. What about a 55-year-old male looking for the same coverage? Um, he's a little older, so perhaps a little heavier, maybe take some heart medication, some blood pressure meds. So we gave him a standard non-tobacco rating. Uh, his premium through Transamerica is $1,197.50, of which your commission would be $1,017.88 simple. Neither of these cases are far-fetched. So what? The so what is that life insurance policies do not require constant servicing. You sell it and forget it. Okay? And I do, obviously don't mean you're going to forget your client. I'm referring to that once the policy is in place, you really no longer have to service the policy itself. Uh, I'm sure you'll call your client on their birthday or anniversary. Uh, which, by the way, uh, is a great time to find out if there have been any recent significant changes to their life 
they could require a little more life insurance. Maybe they bought another house, had another baby, etc. <clears throat> so, as if you guys don't already know, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's talk about the health insurance uh, sale process and how it goes down. You're going to call your lead. Chances are healthcare, healthcare.gov is running slow, so we got to wait for that, allow some time for that. You're going to explain the options, email the quote. If you're a good agent, you're going to check if the doctors are on the network, look at the hospitals in their city and make sure they're on the network, uh, whether it's the EPO, the PPO, the HMO, on exchange, off exchange, all that stuff. Uh, and of course, what fun would it be if the carriers all didn't have different formularies that you have to look at prescriptions under? Um, you're going to take the app. Are you done? Not at all. You're going to have to call UM, chances because your, your client got a procedure of medication denied. Uh, the member services, got, they got a letter from member, member services for termination of coverage for non-payment, even though you personally put your client on auto pay. Uh, every time that EOB goes out, you're going to have to sell the policy all over again. And you have to explain what a deductible is and co-insurance and max out of pockets. Uh, and then now you have the added bonus of having to explain what a qualifying event is. And I can just go on and on and on. <clears throat> Total time invested in your client, no one knows. And, and by the way, these are all uh, scenarios that I took from when I was an agent and everything that I had to deal with when I was selling uh, health insurance. Let's take a look at the life insurance sales, sale process. A little bit different. Uh, you're going to call your lead. You're going to explain the options. You're going to send a quote. Uh, take the app, and then you're going to email to Back Nine Insurance. Uh, total time invested. We're going to go with 60 minutes from the first word spoken to the commission check lands in your hand. Um, obviously, this is not 60 minutes in one sitting. Uh, it's more of a summation of the total time from start to finish. Um, basically, from the time you call your client explain the options, um, you know, probably do some follow-up along the way, make sure they got their exam done and all that stuff. But it's going to be about 60 minutes after it's all said and done. Um, oh, and, and the best part is that you still have plenty of time left. Uh, and Kirby, feel free to, I mean, am I off of my numbers here? I mean, would you say when you write your life insurance that that's about how much time you're investing with your clients? Kirby? Ah, there we are. Uh, yes, uh, I would say that's very right. accurate. Uh, m mostly because when we talk about life insurance with people, there are several centralizing things that fit into this short talk time. How much do you need? Um, things like, um, well, we talk a little bit about the premium, and we talk about what type of life insurance a person needs, you know, to fit with what they're trying to do. But if Jesse and I were to do a short role play here, you guys would get a kind of a, a little listen in on what it means to nail down a death benefit and also what it means to nail down what type of life insurance a person needs. And this is going to take less than 30 minutes, 30 seconds, and, and you'll kind of get this because I'm just going to breeze through real fast. Tell me something, Jesse. How much life insurance do you need? It says here you need 500000 How did you come up with that number? Well, Jesse answers my question, and the best answer he's going to give me is, well, it just sounded like a good number. Well, here's a brief needs analysis I take most people through. Look back at last month. How much money did it take to get the Serrano family through life? Closer to five thousand or closer to six thousand dollars? Jesse says six thousand dollars. I change it to five because once he's dead, there's no food, shoes, or clothes for him. So the the monthly budget is five thousand dollars. And my wife is probably great. I eat about a thousand dollars worth of food a month. So <laughs> there you go. I was putting it in the shoes and the clothes, but you can put it as a food, yeah. And so <laughs> once we figure out what his budget is going back in that month, we now know what that family needs to live on going forward without getting a new dollar from anywhere if they get all of the dollars from the life insurance. So if we multiply that number times 10, so here's the formula, last month times 12 to get an annual bucket of money so they can live for a year, multiply it times 10. So now those people uh, can live for the next 10 years without having to go out and scrape up new money. That's the fastest way I know to figure out how much a person needs for their life insurance. Now, it's a baseline. It may not be entirely accurate, but for someone who is your client, your prospect, they have zero idea of what that 500000 meant when they said it. Now, with that little formula, they can see just how well that 500000 matches to their particular last month reality. In terms of how long the insurance should last, 
I'm fond of asking people this question. How long should your insurance last? And we are salespeople. We like to talk. So at that moment, pretend there's a zipper, and you just zipped it from left to right, and now you're quiet, and you're going to wait for that answer because it's going to be extremely meaningful. Uh, a lot of times people say, I want it till I die. Right then, they've tumbled into a permanent life insurance discussion. Great. We keep talking down that path because that's what that person said. If they said, well, you know, I don't know. I would say, tell me, do you have a child? He says, yes. How old is your youngest? He says, one. Right then, you can see we're probably talking about 20-year term for that need. If he says, I have a mortgage balance, I say, well, how long is that mortgage balance going to be around? He says, 30 years because we just refied. Right now, I'm thinking 30-year term, 25-year term. Either would work to satisfy the need. And if he bought the 30-year term, it takes care of the 20-year need for his child who's going to be at home for most of the 20 years. So if you notice, what I'm doing is I'm trying to take a needs analysis and boil it down to the simplest iteration of a question that you could ever throw at a person just to get them talking. As they're talking, you're forming an idea of what to say to them. But they're doing more of the talking than you are. So the 60 minutes of total work time, well, that conversation can last 10 or 15 minutes. And then all the other minutes are compiled into that because you may call them back to get some information because the case is now pending. And at some point, you call them back and say, we have an approval. And then you put the policy in the mail and you send it to them. And the delivery requirements come back. And the case goes paid. And then you get paid. So yeah, 60 minutes is good. Some take a little longer. I've had some of those take <laughs> half of that. <laughs> okay, yeah, But for yeah. the most part, 60 minutes is a good number. And so, yeah, I mean, there's more to it, of course, and I am simplifying it, but I'm also telling you accurately what happens on a call when I speak to people. So I call the lead, I explain the options, I email the quote, I take the app, and I send it over <laughs> to Jesse, and then Zoe does what Zoe does, and then, boom, all of a sudden, I look in my mailbox, and there's a big pile of cash in there. Perfect. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. So let's talk about that pile of cash. Um, we'll take a look at uh, the simple uh, term life insurance uh, for the 55-year-old, uh, your commission would be about $1,017.80 uh, for about 60 minutes worth of work. Uh, on the health insurance side of the world, that same policy for a 55-year-old, uh, it could provide as little as 1% commission, and of course you would still have to uh, service the client for the entire year. Uh, how many hours uh, will you spend on, on hold or on just for one client on the computer or on hold on the phone with a carrier uh, with them. So what we're trying to avoid is this because we've all been there. <clears throat> so let's take it one step further. So your commission for this case was $1,017.88 uh, for a simple plain vanilla 55-year-old looking to cover the balance on his mortgage. And let's say you write 10 similar policies like this. This would mean that you would have approximately recovered $10,170 in revenue uh, that month. Now, you're going to do this for 10 months because you like to take the summer off. If you do this for 10 months, you will have recovered approximately $101,788 in revenue. This is all attainable numbers um, by selling a simple 20-year term policy or a 30-year term policy. Um, and, I'm, and what if you only sold five apps a month? Well, even if you sold five apps a month, you still would have recovered $50,894 in profits that year. So, and I even haven't begun to explain uh, or talk about advanced strategies that Back9 can, uh, also, can um, also help you with. So, and let's see. Would you like me to chime in? Sure. OK. Uh, one of the things Jesse is touching on is that five apps per month or 10 apps per month. Um, life insurance is a transactional business. And a lot of times, you'll hear people talk about it. They make it sound like it's so esoteric, and it's so different, it's so this, it's so that. It may even be challenging in the minds of some of the folks who are listening to this, especially if you've never really written life insurance. You've heard some things which may put your idea of life insurance on, you know, on par with things you hear about but things you don't do. If you can see how to do it, then that $100,000 starts to look like it's attainable. And the difference of getting from it as a thought of doing it to actually doing it 
is the difference of you simply talking to some people who express an interest in life insurance. Notice I did not say that you have to go out there and scratch them out of the brown earth. You, know, you have to try to find them, and then you have to cherish them and nurture them. What we're talking about is having it so that interested parties who want life insurance are speaking to you on a regular basis, and you are virtually saying the same thing over and over and over and over again to them so that you become a pretty good expert in just explaining life insurance. And as I've said to Jesse many times, this is, if your last name is Einstein, this is probably not for you because you're probably too smart for this. <laughs> so this doesn't require that you become the smartest person on the planet to sell life insurance. The, what I realized was that uh, people have a simple set of needs. And if you can uncover those needs and you can answer the call for what to do about that need, you are the expert. This is not. This five apps a month or 10 apps a month, that's kind of a, a baseline. We came up with those numbers just because we thought that we wanted to show you how much money you can recover with what we call PR program. How much money can you recover? Now, you may not have lost $50,000 last year when individual health insurance clients went away, but wouldn't it be better if you only lost fifteen or 20000 but you ran out and made fifty? <laughs> so more money tends to be better money in my book. And, so if, and, and, and one thing other than that, too, is this. Rolling case count. You'll hear me bring that up again. Rolling case count means how many cases do you have in a pending status in a given month, month by month. So you can see how it's easy to build up a stack of cash if you throw them into underwriting on a regular basis because they slow down when they go into underwriting. They can't underwrite them as fast as you can sell them. And that's how you get to a case count that provides you with $10,000, $20,000 a month. And you're really not working that hard. This is the ultimate version of, um, of wash, rinse, and repeat. <laughs> you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And if you get too smart and you change it, you know, you try to change it and make it better. Well, if it's working and you change it, that's called breaking it. So what you do is to continue doing the same thing over and over. And it gets to be fun after a while, especially when it comes to the point of looking in the mailbox. Well, and Thanks, this kind of segues uh, to, I think, the next uh, slide, which is if, if we're talking about the rinse, wash, rinse, and repeat, um, you after you talk to your family members and your friends, and you let your you know let your immediate circle know that you're now doing life insurance, uh, I think you're eventually going to run out of leads and people to talk to, and, and I think this is where basically we develop the profit recovery program. Uh, which is basically, in fact, I, I originally wanted to call this a Kirby method, uh, but basically it's following the stuff that Kirby's been doing, and um, so we can, because so, I want everyone on this phone call to have, same, have the same success and keep me just as busy as Kirby does um, with all of his cases. And the, the proper recovery program is something that's been time tested. Um, it, we put this in place to help brokers recover lost profits uh, due to the Affordable Care Act changes. Um, we're going to set you up to work with an established, high-quality lead provider. And the best part is that you don't have to learn anything new. You're going to use your existing sales skills that you already have to communicate with life insurance shoppers. And this is going to help you close new business and the, ideally create a stickier client, making you, the, making you a one-stop shop. And, of course, with the support of Back9 Insurance that we can bring to the table, uh, we, we want to watch your case count. Uh, and your commissions grow, and, and we are betting that they could possibly even surpass your pre-ACA income. Um, I, I like this panel, Jesse, mostly because of that third bullet. Um, the reason I, I'm centering on the third bullet, by the way, everybody, is because there's something someone told me back when in the insurance business, and he said, put the pressure on the system. What that means is if you have a number of people coming to you, and they're going to keep coming to you with their interest and their inquiries about life insurance, you're kind of put in the position where you have to get them sold to get them satisfied. <laughs> and it's very different than finding one a month and getting them sold and satisfied. What if there were three or four of them a day, and they were coming to you and they say, here's what I want. I want life insurance, and I need this much and here's my email address, and here's my phone number, and I want you to contact me, I want you to give me a quote, I want you to tell me about this whole life insurance thing, because you know, I know I need it, that's why I'm here. What we mean by high quality lead provider is this, and I'm gonna break it down real fast. There are companies that sell life insurance leads to people like me. 
Uh, I got in on Internet leads way back in the day when if I said an Internet lead, people would look at me like, what's that? What are you talking about? An Internet lead? What do you mean? And so I've been playing with this, as I call my baby, for quite a long time, and I've seen the lead industry grow, and I know who the best providers are. When they send me a lead in 10 seconds or so, I call that person because I know the phone is usually sitting right next to the computer where they generated the query in the first place. So when I call them, that's when the sales talk starts. And when I say put pressure on the system, what I mean is I get, let's say, five or six leads a day, five days a week, Monday through Friday, for about 10 months out of the year. Can you imagine what happens after about the eighth or ninth month, the backlog of leads, people who slow the process down and I have to call them back, I call them back a couple of times, boom, I get them on the phone. And now I'm talking to so many people that it has changed my impression of life insurance. Life insurance is now not a, an industry where we have to go scratch people out of the brown earth, grab their arm and twist it and make them interested just to see if we can get a sale. Life insurance is now in this spot, and this is going to sound weird to some of you guys who have been around for a while. You can actually cause it to be such that at your desktop, no driving, because <laughs> I'm licensed in 15 states, I can get life insurance leads from New Jersey, Texas. I could have 10 of those a day. I could order up 20 of those a day. I would get so killed with 20 of those a day after a few months, I would turn it off and I'd be running down the street crazy because I have too many interested parties trying to buy it from me. That is a conversation we've really never had in life insurance, <laughs> having too many people chasing you down to try to get life insurance. They're going to get angry if you don't call them back. <laughs> okay. So what works for me is this. Putting pressure on the system means I have a number of leads coming and I call those people and I keep in touch with them. And some of them have taken a year to buy from me. A year. But oddly enough, the ones who take the longest time are the ones who pay the most for it. Some folks have paid me $10,000 annual premium in a one-time check and I've never met them. And they came to me over a internet lead. <laughs> My annual budget for leads isn't that great. And I've had one or two cases pay for my annual budget for leads and the rest of them are just gravy. So this actually does work. I see the fourth bullet. It says use your existing sales skill to communicate with life insurance shoppers, close new business, create a stickier client. Look at that. Use your existing sales skills. Everyone on this call has existing sales skills. If you don't have any existing sales skills, you are defined as the people who are not on this call. <laughs> okay. So you already know how to do this. This is not outside your wheelhouse. Right. And, so and if you're trying to replace that profit that you've lost, then this is a good way to do it. Go ahead. So I was going to say, if you guys are wondering, uh, Kirby does not work for the lead uh, provider. Kirby is not an employee of, of, uh, of Back9. Um, like I said, I brought Kirby in because of his process. And when I say time test, it, it means that I've been doing business with Kirby for quite some time now, and he just stuck out because of all the business he was doing. I eventually said, Kirby, what are you doing? Where are you getting these clients, and how do you keep us busy uh, so much? It's a, it's, a, it's a fun business to be in. I've, I'm sitting in front of two computer screens, and I have my Outlook on where I get you know interested parties coming in in my inbox. It's kind of a fun business. You'll get to be a real expert in life insurance, and every now and then a big one will come across because you're talking to someone who owns a business, let's say, and they realize you know what you're talking about, and what they're going to do is they're going to lean in and they're going to tell you more than they expected to tell you. And suddenly, if you're an annuity seller, well, okay, you get a sale out of that. Oddly enough, I had one person go to my website, look at life insurance, and he's not ready to buy yet, but he told his friend, go to his website, look at it. He did it. And he came across as a client. He's in underwriting now. The annual premium is close to $10,000 when this case is all said and done. And sometimes it works that way. Imagine that. I didn't even buy a lead. <laughs> yeah. Someone just jumped right in the basket and called me out of the blue. So it was really great. Right. Fun and, to have that happen. And, and we, like I said, we don't, you know, we, we want to encourage you to, of course, we want you to cross all to your current clients. After all, I mean, they already trusted you with their health care. Uh, so why not should they trust you with their life insurance, their long-term care, their disability insurance? So we just think that once you uh, run out of friends and family and your book of business, you're eventually going to need to looking. You can't grow a business um, from your friends and family. You can get a few sales out of them and maybe a few referrals, but the reality is that if you want to survive, you're going to need uh, more clients, and the, uh, the, the profit recovery program is, is the way to go. Um, 
if you guys are thinking, uh, Jesse, I'm not even sure where to begin. This sounds too good to be true. How, how do I uncover all of my clients' needs? Uh, we have you covered as well. Um, <clears throat> we've created a one-page fact finder that's going to help you indicate the need for life insurance. Um, afterwards, you simply send the form back to us, and we're going to um, uh, generate a, a proposal that you can present to your clients. Um, you're not answering any product-based questions. Uh, you're simply fact-finding and doing your due diligence um, as your client's insurance agent. Uh, you don't need to be an expert on the 40 life insurance cares and all their products and everything that they, that they offer. Simply just be able to recognize the opportunity uh, for life insurance in your client's uh, financial uh, portfolio. Um, if your clients already have life insurance, it's perfect. Uh, they already believe in the product. Uh, you don't need to sell them on anything. However, what you can do is offer them a complimentary um, policy review. Um, and what the policy review is, is you're going to have your client uh, sign a half-page uh, HIPAA authorization form. You send that back to us. This releases their current policy information to us. And what we'll do is that we're going to create a one-page summary illustrating three different solutions. Um, I'm not sure if you have much experience with life insurance illustrations, but they're about 25 to 30 pages long. We're not going to do that to you and put you in that situation where you have to explain a 30-page illustration to your client what the life insurance policy is supposed to do. We're going to give you a simple, easy to read, you do not need a life insurance license for this uh, solution. So the first solution that we'll suggest is let's take your current, uh, your client's current um, death benefit. However, let's shop it around, see if we can get a better price uh, for them, better bang for their buck. Um, so we, so if in this case we have the same $1 million policy, um, perhaps we can get a lower premium uh, through uh, principal um, for MetLife. So we'll, we'll present some options for you. Um, we also have, if your client has already budgeted for that annual premium for their life insurance, um, let's take that same amount of money and see if we can get you more death benefits. Instead of a million dollars, we can get you 1.7 with MetLife. Um, and then the last uh, solution that we'll present is simply, and this seems to be the most popular one, is to take the cash value in the policy and just buy a one-time paid-up policy so your client never has to worry about making payments on a life insurance policy for the rest of their life. And, and by the way, guys, if, if you would like a copy of the policy review and the fact finder, we can brand it with your company logo. We don't need to market our back nine logo. This is your business, so we want to promote your business. Uh, you can email me um, a high-quality JPEG, and we'll customize both documents, the policy review and the fact finder with your business company logo and any other information you'd like me to put on there. Um, another thing that I want to talk about here is a producer's place. Um, it's a proprietary case management software that we've created here uh, at Back9 Insurance. We have uh, carriers come to our office, I'd say, one to two times a month uh, just to check in with us and tell us about their latest and greatest and their product offerings and what's going on in the business. Um, but when we show our portal to them, uh, not one of them still to the day has said they've seen anything like this. And remember, these are carriers who work with other GAs like us, yet they still haven't seen anybody present a, a, a software like this to use uh, for, their, uh, for the agents under them. With the producer's place, uh, you're going to be able to get live case status, so which means that you can go to your to desktop, your tablet, your smartphone, and look up your case. So you know exactly uh, case number, uh, conversion, expiration dates, uh, requirements um, as far as um, stuff that is needed. Uh, you're going to be able to track any enforce or pending business, view your commissions, uh, appointments with the different carriers, um, track enforce data feeds, so cash values in the policy, um, access any documents uh, in the, the, there's, uh, pertain to your case, and uh, something that we just recently added is live chat with your case manager. So each one of you has a case manager that's assigned to you that will make sure it will guide your client's case through underwriting to make sure it goes as smooth as possible. Well, now instead of sitting on hold with the carrier and trying to find out what's going on in underwriting, you can simply 
instant message or case manager here at Back9 Insurance go, hey, Zoe, hi, Cindy, what's going on? You know, talking about Joe Smith's uh, case. So we've tried to make this very, very, very easy for you. Um, we feel that with uh, Back9, we can provide you the tools to service your clients. Uh, we have the technology for you to track and manage all of your business. Uh, most importantly, with life in, with Back9 Insurance, um, you will now have a life insurance department that is on your staff and not on your payroll. Uh, each one of you will have a market manager assigned to you, which is going to help you uh, find the solutions for your clients. A case manager, like I said, is assigned to you whose sole job is to ensure that your client gets through underwriting smoothly. Um, you have access to our internal wholesaler. Uh, who will make sure that your client gets the best pricing for their policies. And by following the steps of the profit recovery program, uh, we feel that this is going to be the fastest and easiest path to start recovering lost income and get you on that fast track to success. All you have to do is follow a time-tested, proven method that will allow you to start generating income and recovering that lost profit. Remember this picture. It's all about keeping things simple and effortless while maximizing uh, your benefit and income. Um, if you guys have any questions, by all means, please uh, you can chat some message uh, to us. Also, if you have, uh, if you ha would like to get that customized policy review and the fact finder, like I said, you can email me here at Back Nine Insurance uh, with a high quality JPEG. More information on the proper recovery program. We have Kirby's information on there. Um, and uh, we can wait here and see if there are any questions that come through. Ten eighty Rampton Street, Geneva, California nine two one five four five one zero three six 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 seven four zero. Sure. You want me to say it again? Oh no, that's okay. I went too fast. 1080 San Diego, California, line two one five four. I want to thank everybody for attending our webinar, and we want you to stay tuned for our next uh, webinar, which is going to be on April first, and it's going to talk about the the life insurance sale and going to the different uh, life insurance products. Yeah. We all have the presentation available online if you would like the re uh, recording, a copy of the recording. Thank you very much and have a great day.